one afternoon, Mary skipped down a path that led to a wooded park. At the park gate, she heard a low, peculiar whistling sound. Walking through the gate, she saw a boy sitting under a tree. He was playing a wooden pipe. The boy had a turned-up nose and the bluest eyes Mary had ever seen. A brown squirrel watched him from in the tree. A cock pheasant peeked out from the bushes. Can you see him there in the picture? There he is. And two rabbits sat up and sniffed. There they are. It seemed as if they were drawing near to listen to the boy's music. When he saw Mary, the boy stopped his music and rose slowly. He didn't want to frighten the animals. I'm Dickon, he said, and I know you're Mary. He had a wide, curving mouth, and his smile brightened his entire face. Mary knew nothing about boys and felt rather shy, but Dickon did not seem to notice. He'd received Martha's letter and had come with the garden tools and flower seeds that they had requested. Excited, Mary asked to see the seeds. I've got a lot of mignonette and poppy seeds, Dickon said. Mignonette's the sweetest smelling thing that grows. It'll grow wherever you plant it, just like poppies. Dickon spoke quickly and easily. Mary liked him right off, and she soon forgot her shyness. I'll plant the seeds for you myself, Dickon continued. Where's your garden? Mary was not sure what to say. At last, clutching his sleeve, she asked, Can you keep a secret? Of course, he said. If I couldn't keep secrets about such things as foxes, cubs, and birds' nests, there'd be nothing safe on the moor. Mary thought about this, but sharing her precious secret made her nervous. I've stolen a garden, she said, but I'm the only one in the world who wants it to be alive. Mary saw the puzzled look on Dickens' face. Come, I'll show you, said, she said. She led Mary, she led, Mary led Dickon to the wall, lifted the hanging ivy, and slowly pushed the door open. They entered together. I'm going to let Grandpa get it. And Mary waved her hand around proudly. It's this, she said. Have you heard of the secret garden? Dickon nodded as he looked at the lovely tangle of trees and bushes. What an odd, pretty place, he said. Dickon knew how to tell the dead branches from the live ones, and soon he was busy at work. He cut away the dead ones with his knife. Then he spotted Mary's own clearings around the flower sprouts. Why, I thought you didn't know anything about gardening, he exclaimed. A gardener couldn't have taught you better. Mary showed him more clearings, which Dickon said were full of crocuses, snowdrops, narcissus, and daffodils. A chirp came from one of the trees. Who's that robin, Colin? he asked. Ben Weatherstaff, said Mary. But he knows me, too. Dickon moved closer to the tree and made a sound almost like the robin's twitter. When the robin answered, Dickon said, Yes, the bird's a friend of yours. Mary thought Dickon was just as nice as she'd imagined he would be. And he could talk to birds and animals, too. You're the fourth person I like, confessed, she confessed to Dickon. The other three were Martha, Martha's mother, and Ben Weatherstaff. And there was the robin, of course. Later that same day, Mary rushed through her noon meal to get back to Dickon in the garden. Martha stopped her, however. Mrs. Medlock says Mr. Craven wants to see you, she said. He's gone away for a long time to travel in foreign places, and he wants to meet you first. Martha helped Mary into her best dress and brushed her hair. By the time Mary followed Mrs. Medlock down the long hallways to Mr. Craven's study, she was very nervous. Although she'd been at Misselthwaite Manor for several weeks, Mary had never met her mysterious uncle. All she knew about him was that he had a crooked back and had acted strangely ever since his wife died. He must be some kind of monster, she thought, knocking on the study door. Come in, Mr. Craven said. Mary entered and moved slowly toward him. He's not too frightening, she thought to herself. He's just a man with high, crooked shoulders and black hair streaked with white. If he didn't look so miserable, he might even be handsome. Still, Mary felt a little scared. Come here, Mr. Craven said. Mary stepped closer. What do you think about Misselthwaite? What do you do here at Misselthwaite, he asked. I play outdoors, gasped Mary. I skip and run, and I look at the flower sprouts sticking up out of the earth. Don't look so scared, he said. A child like you could not do any harm. What do you want? Toys? Books? Dolls? Mary shook her head. Could I have a bit of earth to plant seeds in? 
Mr. Craven studied Mary and answered slowly, You remind me of someone else who loved the earth and things that grow. Take as much as you want that's not being used and make it come alive. <gasps> oh, Mary was relieved. Now she could call the secret garden her own. She politely curtsied and left the study.